Okay, um, we've been dealing with various types of integrals, trying to solve them with the UDU substitution technique. Uh, as you go through more integration problems, you'll learn a whole arsenal of uh, different techniques to handle them with. But whenever you're confronted with an integral, uh, your first attempt should always be, can it be solved with the UDU substitution? And here we've got the integral of x squared times e to the minus x cubed dx. Now, when you're using this technique, obviously you have to decide what do you want to call u. And when you're making that decision, you have to ask yourself, well, if I call a certain component of the integral u, then what is du going to be? And does that accommodate the du? Does that accommodate the other terms that are inside the integral sign? So here, if I decided, let's call this u, du would be x dx. Here I have an e to the minus x cubed. Uh, obviously, that's not going to work. If we said, well, let's call this u. But then du would have an e to some power um, dx. But that's not going to work. For example, if we said, well, let u equal e to the minus x cubed, du will equal e to the minus x cubed. Then I had to take the derivative of this, which would be, give us some more room here, du would equal minus 3x squared dx. So this would be u, but du has all these other terms in it, mainly this one, um, so that one's work out for us. So when you look the problem over, hopefully it will be clear, this has to be u. And then in fact, if I say let u We would say that u be equal to minus x cubed. When I take that derivative, or differential here, du then is minus 3x squared dx, which is what we have here. So divide both sides. I have minus one third du equals x squared dx. Now we're all set up to go ahead and tackle the rest of the uh, integral. So this will become is e to the u and x squared dx that's minus one third du. Take this to the outside. And now we're all set to go. This would just be minus one third e to the u, and there's no limits here, so we would have an arbitrary constant. And that would be it, but remember we made a substitution here. u is this, so we can go back to our original integral. e to the minus x cubed du equals minus one-third e to the u, which is minus x cubed plus a constant. And that would be it. So you see, really, the integral was all set up for us. If we had just this integral, like this, that we would not be able to solve. But by putting the x squared in there, then it's all set up for a UDU substitution. And let's see, we've got some time left over, so let's check ourselves. If we take the differential of this side of the equation, it should give us what's inside of the integral sign. 
So let's see, we want to take the differential of minus one third e to the minus x cubed. The differential of that, of course, is zero. And so here this will be minus one third and the differential of e to the minus x cubed is e to the minus x cubed times the differential of this power. And so that's going to be another minus sign. And that will be 3x squared dx. Again, just taking the differential of this term here. 3x squared dx with a minus sign before it. So this will equal x squared e to the minus x cubed dx the threes here cancel the negatives become a positive and this is what we had inside of our integral sign so yes we proved that in fact this is the correct answer for this integral um, so Again, hopefully this is helpful to you and uh, some of the things you have to consider when trying to apply the UDU substitution for solving integrals. Uh, we're going to be posting more videos and what we're going to focus on next is using trig substitutions for solving integrals and also we'll have some examples of how to handle integrals where you have things raised to an exponent power. For example, suppose we want to solve this kind of integral. Say 111 raised to the 7x dx. How would you solve something like that? And again, the key to it is remembering what's involved with logarithmic differentiation. So we'll have um, a couple of videos illustrating this, and then we're going to post videos on how to use trig substitutions to solve different kinds of integrals. So come back, see if you can join us for those videos, and we'll try to work some more problems.